ahead and dive in. It is 12 o'clock on Thursday, the 16th. Thank you for joining us for West Slope Startup Week 2020. This is our second, <laughs> woo, this is our second annual West Slope Startup Week. Hopefully you were with us last year in Grand Junction. Maybe we will all be together in Grand Junction again next year, but I am absolutely loving how this event is growing and evolving in the way that it is connecting all of us small business owners and entrepreneurs and hardworking people on the West Slope. This is a really cool opportunity to meet other people in your field outside your field and in uh -oh. so West Slope Startup Week is an event crafted by the entrepreneurial community for the West Slope. A huge thank you to all of our sponsors, including our title sponsor, US Bank. Um, you can see some of our other sponsors listed on the slide that is in front of you, including Greenline Ventures, Colorado Lending Source, CART, ASAP Accounting and Payroll, and SCAPE Southwest Colorado Accelerator Program for Entrepreneurs. The communications track is brought to you by Mountain Dog Media, my agency based out of Steamboat Springs. We are super happy to be involved in this event for the second year in a row. And I am very excited to introduce uh, Brian Wax to you today, who is going to be sharing the 12 steps to content marketing. This is content marketing is the marketing. So I am so excited for you guys to be learning about this. If you have questions, toss them into the chat. Um, I will be helping moderate those throughout the session. And then Brian's going to get back to those towards the end um, to take all of your comments. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brian. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Again, thanks to the sponsors. This doesn't happen without the sponsors. So I just want to hit, hit that home again. Thank you all. Um, so here we go. I call it the 12-step program to content marketing because, let's face it, we all know the pain, right? How do we get people to our websites? Well, content marketing um, is a big part of that. Um, here we go. So my name is Brian Wax. Uh, my nickname is Wacko. I've been called that for a while, and I've embraced it, and I embrace my mediocrity, and I've been doing internet marketing since um, the early 90s, and, or late 90s, I should say. And I've watched it change dramatically. And in some ways, it's gotten harder. And in some ways, it's gotten easier. But it's constantly changing. So in any 12-step programs, you got to do the steps, right? So let's talk about step one, right? You have to admit there's a problem, right? You have to embrace the mediocrity, all right? So. We all have this problem. We're too busy. We're running our companies. Guilty as charged. I just launched a company on February 1st and started sales last Wednesday. I'm crazy busy. We all have this problem. We got to figure it out. How do we drive people to our site? Qualified leads to our site. So I love this statement, right? It was supposed to be a level playing field for small businesses and help them compete with their enterprise counterparts. Really? Is that what the internet really did for us? I think not, okay? Now we have multiple hats, and of all people, I definitely have multiple hats. I'm not wearing mine today. But how do we, how do we navigate these waters of all these different tactics and platforms we have to do, right? So we have this problem. We know there's a lot of stuff to be done. How do we attack it, right? Well, too much, too little, too late, all right? Let's talk about some stats, right? 50% of leads are qualified, but not ready to buy. They're shopping, they're researching, okay? So keep in mind, you have to do what? You gotta keep them nurtured, right? So if you excel at lead nurturing, okay, you're gonna generate 50% more sales at a 33% lower cost. And by the way, we all know that 67.2% of all statistics are full of crap. Right, we know that, right? So here's a sad stat, okay? 73% of companies have no process for re-engaging and nurturing their leads after sales. You spent all this money to get them to come to your site through Facebook ads, through pay-per-click, through SEO, emails, and you're not nurturing them afterwards, right? Because remember, they're not all ready to buy. They're still shopping and researching, okay? So 
When you talk about ROI in marketing, one of, still one of the best tactics is email. Um, every dollar invested on average gets you $44 of return. That is good return. That's worth exploring, right? So step three in the program, right? You gotta ask for help, right? You admitted you have the problem. It's too little, too late. Ask for help, admitting that you're not alone in this, all right? So let's talk about automation. Okay, when we're trying to automate our website, it sounds intimidating and it feels like this, right? I connect this to that and what do I do and what I have to write? Well, you wanna know something? It, it's actually not that hard if you follow uh, certain steps. And it, yes, it takes patience, it takes different platforms, but we've watched a lot of entrepreneurs do it. Our agency has done it for them and we've watched people do it themselves. It's not that hard. You just have to have the patience and ask for that help. Okay. So you've created these automations and what problems do they solve, right? Well, number one, they help you qualify leads. So you know when to follow up. Certain people are ready to buy now, certain people tomorrow, certain people six months, certain people have budgets, certain people don't have budget. This automation allows you to qualify them, okay? You keep people attracted by making it easier to stay in touch on their terms. Twitter, text messaging, email, Facebook Messenger. It drives us all crazy. It's the nature of the beats. beast. If you don't keep up, you're gonna lose out, okay? Automation allows you to capture leads and segment them, right? Some people want the blue product. You only want to send them information on that blue product, okay, because they're only interested in blue. They didn't touch red. They're not clicking on red. So that's how you segment them toward their interests, okay? You want to convert leads into sales by tailoring that content to them, right? If they're looking for a blue car, right, I'm not sending them any ads or any emails or anything with red cars. They're going to get content with blue, okay? And, and something that we, we never talk about and we should talk about more is the most expensive lead you can get is a new one. The cheapest lead you can get is an existing customer. So just upsell to them through your messaging. Make them aware, keep on top of telling them what you're doing, what improvements you have, best practices you see, depending on your business model, okay? And also these automations can help you with deeper insights on what's going on with interactions of your visitors across your properties so that you can make better decisions going forward on what tactics, et cetera, you're gonna use for conversions, okay? Now, it doesn't solve all problems, all right? So it, what it does not solve is, number one, a lack of overall strategy, okay? You have to take your time you have to work with people that can help you design that strategy and then execute on the strategy with different tactics and figure out which of those tactics are worth more budget, which of those tactics should be, uh, budget should be taken away from, okay? Um, if you're getting open rates that are declining, you got problems, right? Let's face it, subjects, content, um, your, your, your service, your product is no longer fitting. Okay, that same goes for a shrinking email list, same thing. Okay, you're not, you're not where your customer needs you to be anymore. Um, here's something that we talk about in our company is purchased emails list. You have to be super careful with them because most cheap email lists are worth exactly what you paid for them, almost nothing. It's better to build your own list but there are companies, we actually have a very high-end um, client that sells very high-end lists, I should say, for HR directors. Those type of lists, it is $50,000 to get their list because it's curated by hand with people on the phone talking to these HR directors so that they know that that person is a real person that you're marketing to, okay? Um, it's not gonna help you with qualifying your leads, okay? You have to go through the process of putting the proper questions in place and salespeople in place to qualify those leads. And it's not gonna help with poor quality of data and lack of personalization, right? You have to content 
uh, and take that content and target it and personalize it to that audience. So step four in the process, right? You gotta get some tools, right? So we all know there's plenty of tools out there. It's almost never about the drill, it's how you use the drill. So um, here's some core automation technologies for automation. Um, number one, well, I'm having problems with PowerPoint. Um, you have a CMS, right? CMS is a content management system, WordPress, um, Squarespace. These are website systems that make it easy for you to manage and uh, put content, okay? A CRM is customer relationship management. On a very simple uh, level, it could be Outlook. Um, on a sophisticated level, it could be salesforce.com or even things like high rise or capsule or pipe drive. And then the third leg of that wheel is a mass email platform like MailChimp or higher end Marketo or Pardot or something like that. Um, so step five, you have these technologies and you wanna track behavior, okay? So what does that mean? So you have all these people with different demographics and, but they have similar interests. So you wanna find them across those demographics and market to them and target to them the content that they are looking for. And how do you do this? Through tracking. So what's the difference between tracking and site analytics, okay? Well, tracking, okay, is watching somebody on their journey, right? And you're watching them across the web and seeing that they like blue. I keep using that analogy of red and blue products, right? Analytics is all about finding that guy walking across the web, looking for his blue car, all right? So analytics drives those individual leads. So the key is to get that message that's targeted to that lead for that blue car in their inbox at just the right time. And that's what this is all about. So one of the ways we do it, this is called an argument, is um, in a tracking mechanism. You've heard of pixels and in emails. Um, your software will put an argument like this in there, whether it's MailChimp or Marketo, so it knows that that lead and what they're doing across the web. Um, there's also these things called pearls, personalized uh, landing pages. It's used a lot in business to business marketing where you're looking to land a big client and you're trying to solve a very specific problem with them. So maybe the landing page they come to always says Coca-Cola on it because they're Coca-Cola and you're trying to land that Coca-Cola account. So step six, let's talk about sales funnels, all right? Um, I love this little analogy. I love this movie. I don't know about you guys, but you keep saying sales funnel, I don't think you know what that means. Okay, so sales funnels, right? You got all those analytics. Remember all those people on the beach? They're at the top of your sales funnel. They're coming through and slowly but surely you're nurturing them, you're nurturing them. They've downloaded something, they've clicked something, they've seen an ad, they're learning more, they're searching your site, et cetera, until they come out the bottom as a qualified lead and hopefully a customer because we don't care about all the people on the beach, we care about that one guy who's looking for that blue car, okay? So traffic does not rule your fortunes, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why. If you go back to that lead tracking, again, we're trying to find those right people walking down the beach. So let's do some math here, okay? If I have 1,500 visitors per month and a 0.5 conversion rate, that equals seven leads a month, okay? If my close rate is 25%, I'm gonna get no more than two new deals a month, all right? Let's have another scenario. If I double my traffic, I get 14 leads a month, but that still only equates to four deals a month. But what if I increase my conversion rate to 1.5% close, excuse me, my conversion rate to 1.5 and my close rate to 35%, I can now seven new deals a month without increasing my traffic. And if I did double my traffic, I would get 15 deals a month. So the key is to qualify 
that traffic and make sure it's higher quality and you're giving them what they need and not just spraying in front. So step seven, okay? Let's talk about driving traffic, right? Content is king, we've all heard it, right? What the hell does that mean, content is king? Let's talk about that, all right? You have this tree, this marketing tree. You have presentations and social media and search engine optimization and landing pages and the branches of the tree are constantly growing and changing. There's new, new sprouts coming off this tree all the time. But with blogging, that is the roots and the trunk of the tree that distributes all these to different branches of that tree. Okay. So what is a good blog post? Well, it's short and simple, it's helpful, it's informative, it tells a story. I'd like to say it's the shit, baby. So, blogging, okay? You should spend about one hour a week on a blog, one blog a week. Okay, you don't have to go crazy. That's, if you do two blogs a month, that's okay too. If you do one blog, it's better than nothing. But I'm telling you, you can do one hour a week and do a blog. We're talking about 500 words for SEO reasons, and it's keyword centric. If somebody's searching for blue cars, you want that blog post to be for blue cars. All right? So step seven, getting conversions. All right? So you have all these pieces of the, the, the sandwich that we're building here, right? You have your tracking, you got your autoresponders put in there, you got your website, you got your forms they're filling out, you got landing pages that are specific to an offer and email marketing and external traffic sources like Facebook, pay-per-click, etc. And on top of it, you have an offer. And that offer is important, okay? So what is the offer? A good offer will, it's be simple and specific. Um, don't overcomplicate it, all right? It's gonna be a value to the audience. It's gonna position you to make that sale, okay? And it's gonna become a negligible cost to you because the reason we're doing the offer is psychologically, we're not trying to give them a discount, we're trying to track our marketing efforts and to see what offer, what campaign, what email, what post is converting better. And that's what the offer is all about. Each offer is being tracked separately, okay? But be careful that you're not gonna give away the farm on these offers, okay? It's typical to do about a 10% type of offer. So I think I skipped a slide. So here's, here's an example of a workflow of tools being put together and what happens if somebody clicks, what if they don't click? And that's what all these tools are going to do. And we're going to have to write the content and, um, you know, use these tools to tie them all together. So you have, you know, tools like WordPress, you have MailChimp and Aweber and Content Manager, SEO Yoast and Jetpack and all in one pack and automation and lead tracking programs. And you, you, these are all the different tools. Um, you can use, there's many more than on this page. This is just um, some of the ones that we use. Um, so, step eight. You got to match the offer to a conversion page, to a landing page, all right? So, the whole idea of a landing page is you want them to come specifically to a certain page that is highly targeted and built for that offer, okay? So, you'll notice that when you're making these landing pages, they're designed for one thing, for number six, for you to click here and do it now, learn more, buy it now, download now, whatever that is, you're not, they are not designed for them to start browsing your website, okay? They can do that later. So you have this you know, nice looking headlines, secondary headlines, you have your call to action of do it now, click here. You have some um, testimonials or social proof it's called. 
Um, and you'll notice it's taking up as much of the page as possible and it's really simple, okay? Here's another one that's, um, you know, graphically, it's not the, the type of design that I would use, but this is a super effective landing page. Call us because they have high-end sales or hit the contact button. Um, here, here's another landing page. Notice we have a form in here. And again, what do we want them to do? One thing, fill out the form or call us. That's it. They're not gonna go browse our website after this. We're talking about our expertise, our money and equals greatness and, and the offer is such. So in step nine, we have to capture info, right? We have to get forms. So we love a tool called Gravity Forms because it is the ultimate form tool because it syncs with everybody. And to make your life easier, there are certain things that are universal and this makes that integration somewhat universal. So Gravity Forms, one form pushes the data to multiple places. Step nine in the process is you gotta send a campaign out, right? So one of the platforms that we use a lot is um, MailChimp. Um, we also use higher end platforms like Marketo and Pardot, but MailChimp for low end and for pretty high end works very, very well. Another thing about MailChimp is they are very specific on the companies they allow on their platform. So you get into the inbox at a higher rate than a lot of other platforms. Managing email is a bear. You do not want to send mass emails out through your Gmail or your Office 365 because you will get listed as a spammer. And that's the value of mass email platforms like MailChimp is they figure out ways to make sure that your emails are getting into somebody's inbox. So we have different types of emails that go out. We have email blasts, right? That's a, a large email that is an offer. Um, and then we have email drips that are very specific to a lead to an interest of blue. Um, so we, we use both types of meet emails and we usually start with the email blast to our whole audience or to a segment of our audience. And then we drip those individual leads based upon their interest. Again, that blue car. So, one of the negatives about these email platforms is they want you to create drag and drop emails and the problem with those is twofold. They're very graphically um, heavy and they write lots of extraneous code to allow you to drag and drop stuff. So in our company, when we have, um, companies that we do email marketing for, we handwrite all the code ourselves. Even though we're sending it out through MailChimp, it's all handwritten and cleaned up to remove all those extraneous tags and stuff. So, you know, when you're sending out a graphic email, you want it as clean as possible. We've all heard in marketing and branding, white space, white space, white space. Well, the cleaner, the better. Okay. Simpler, the better. Again, here's a really simple email that goes out, which is a press release. You know, nothing crazy, simple, simple, simple. Um, step 10, your subject line. You have a half a second to determine whether or not that person is going to open it or not. So your subject line is huge when it comes to conversions. So. 64% of people say they open it because of the subject line. So you got to put a lot of effort and that's where AB testing comes in. So test, 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 test as much as you can and optimize, optimize, optimize till you get that ultimate subject line. And it's a never ending process. So a good subject will be short to the point. It's going to be personalized with a first name. If you can do that, right? Did you capture the data? Sometimes it's not the best idea to capture too many fields in a form. We generally tell clients three fields at most, um, especially with the first, um, the first form that they fill out. 
It needs to be catchy and intriguing, um, but not deceptive. Don't sell them BS. It's not gonna help, okay? So here's just an example of a cold email sent to 500 people. Um, I can't see the subject line, but I know it because Kaylee's face is there, hello. Um, a cold email sent to strangers, you have 43% open rate. That's way above a normal 15 to 25% open rate and a click-through rate of 5.2%. And that is way above normal of um, one to 2%, uh, actually more like two to 2.5%, sorry. And the sub subject line, you can see it's personalized, it's easy, and I'm sending this to somebody that I know is using gravity forms. So of course they're gonna say, wait a second, how did you know that? Let's talk, right? So when you're making an email newsletter, you've already written all those blogs and hopefully you've written for a month, we always suggest to customers maximum three um, subjects or categories in a newsletter per month because we just don't have the mental bandwidth. We have ADHD all of us these days. So your blog posts have now become your newsletter. And you might put two or three sentences in that newsletter with a read more link that links right back to your website because the one thing that you control more than anything is your website, not Facebook, not Pinterest, not Twitter, your website. You want to drive them there. Step 11, create an auto response, right? Remember they're not ready to buy today. They're ready to buy sometime in the future. So auto responders. They're in the inbox at the right time. They're automatic. And when you take, you know, something like gravity forms, you're using MailChimp, um, you're using something like Orbiter for lead tracking, you're going to put all these emails into their inbox at the right time. And because of their behavior, you might pivot and put them in a different segment saying, okay, well now, I know they're now in the qualified segment and I'll move them to a different um, workflow. Now, the beauty of autoresponders is, I don't know if anybody know, those, know this guy from my generation, but this is Ron Popeil. He invented the pocket fisherman. He was the king of TV infomercials. One of his uh, ads on TV was set it and forget it. It was this, that, that's that oven right there that he marketed. So with autoresponders, you set them up. If everything meets the criteria, it's on automation, it's on cruise control, you can forget about it. So some tips for a great autoresponder are make it plain text so it looks more like a regular email. So remove all the graphics, okay? It looks like it came from your Outlook. It looks like it came from your Gmail, all right? Be specific to your target's needs. I think that's obvious. Talk about the blue car, okay? Personalize it. You can do that with merge fields, you know? If you don't get their name the first time, you can bring them to a separate landing page the second time, get three more pieces of information from them, and get that data into your, plat your CMS, um, your CRM, I mean, and or mailchimp, okay? but don't over-personalize it because then it gets to be kind of creepy. Hi, John, did you open up? We know you're using gravity forms. Would you like to talk, right? And keep in mind, they, you don't have to have an action to trigger these. It could be simply, they haven't done anything in two weeks. Let's send them another email. That's part of your workflow, okay? The last step in 12-step program is you got to coordinate it all, right? You got all these pieces of the puzzle and it's all going to be coordinated. You got to take your time. You got to do your tests, make sure everything's connected. So that way you can do the Ron Popeil, set it and forget it and move on to your next activity. So if we're doing blogging, 
We're doing four blogs, four hours a month, our email newsletter, which is basically a template, and we're copying and pasting two or three sentences from each blog into each section or category in the newsletter with a read more link coming back to the blog, and we're setting up the campaign, okay? And it takes us about, you know, two hours a month. We're talking six hours a month um, or 90 minutes a week. I don't think that's a big investment, but we all know we all get crazed, guilty as charged. Like I said, I just launched another company in sales on Wednesday. We have not done this ourselves yet. So with all that, um, these costs are, I realized I forgot to correct this, but these costs are probably from three years ago, but they're roughly the same. Um, we're talking about an investment of around 150 to 100 media month in tools. That's not a big cost for automation, um, specifically when you talk about what is the cost for a human to do this. So I love this quote, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. This guy, Aristotle, he was pretty smart. I don't know if you, any of you guys have hung out with him before. So thank you, Brian and my sales butler, if you have any questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I can find where my mouse is. And that's it for now. So let's start, let's start talking. This is weird, I can't find my mouse. Do we wanna open this up? Thank you, Brian. I'm curious for people that haven't taken on a content marketing strategy yet. Um, I find one of the biggest barriers is coming up with topic ideas. So do you want to speak a little bit to, um, do you have a process for brainstorming ideas in bulk one at a time and making those topics keyword focused? Well, I, I, I think it starts from the keywords and then also from feedback from customers. You're hearing something constantly, constantly, and it hasn't been addressed. So you know if customers are asking it, you know leads are gonna address, wanna address that too. Um, and I think it goes back to the strategy. You know, if, if we're selling blue Cadillacs, we're gonna have a really different strategy if we're selling blue, blue Chevy Cobalts, you know? So I think it goes back to the strategy and who that targeted customer is and what segment we want to, you know, get activity from. I see a question in here um, from Serge. Um, is that based on data you've collected from one specific niche or several? Um, I would say several. And what I mean by that is I've had the luck as a serial entrepreneur or the being unlucky as a serial entrepreneur to be involved in multiple uh, verticals. And there's a positive and negative to that. So I was in real estate and mortgage for years, chief marketing officer of a mortgage bank. Um, I was on the team that created the first uh, loan origination platform online. So I have a deep background in that industry, but stuff from that industry carried over to other industries because we would see the way banking would do it and we would carry it over to medical or we would, or we would um, carry it over to, um, uh, attorneys, you just, I think one of the, the joys for me as a marketer is you're constantly learning about different verticals and about different companies. And therefore you can take something from that, um, that experience and push it over to a different company and different vertical. All right, we've got another question that was sent over um, in a private chat, but this seems like a really great one worth discussing. So um, this individual comments, this seems to be focused towards established businesses. How would a new business begin to build towards this process? Well, I think 
um, it, it really isn't much different for established business. I mean, you have a product, you have a service, you have to tell people about that. I mean, marketing is not, nothing more than a fancy word for getting a message out there. And you have different distribution channels to get that message out there. Um, and, you know, always the best channel is referrals. But to accentuate those referrals, you have to get your brand in front of people. You have to show them that your product, your service is worthwhile and why. You know, features and benefits. What pain am I solving? Um, if, it's, if it's a product and it's not really a pain, it's a joy, what joy am I creating? So I don't think it changes much. You had just have to say, I'm the best there is at this, or I think I'm the best there is, or I think I can solve that problem, and here's why. And I would say, don't overcomplicate it and don't overthink it because there's, there, there's, there's value that probably you're not seeing in your own product or service. So put, just putting it out there is sometimes enough. I mean, we use the adage all the time in our companies, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. Get it out there, find out what's working, find out what's not working, don't be afraid, put it out there. I think that's a great point, Brian. One of the things that I love about content marketing is that it is this opportunity to build authenticity and value and to tell your story and make those connections when you're in those infantile stages of startup um, without investing capital. So I love that, you know, this is a sweat equity task. It's about sharing your heart and, and you can use that to build authenticity and value in your brand, um, you know, for zero dollars. Yeah, I hear, hear on that. Um, I was going to say too, like, if I'm going to use my own example for my sales butler, you know, you're, you're going to see social media from us on Instagram and Facebook. And because of the nature of the people who I tend to work with is you have to be serious and you have to have a sense of humor because we're doing this and we're lucky enough that we can do this. So we got to have fun, but don't get me wrong. We're going to be serious. So we have our fun side that we're constantly trying to put up. I donate time to farmers. In fact, by the way, at four o'clock is the ag track. Um, uh, we're doing a cooking class and anybody's in Grand Junction, there'll be food at the incubator. So I'm running the ag track of this event. So what do we do? We, I, I, I give time for farmers for free. My sales butler helps farmers for free because let's face it, they struggle and they need help. So we put up social media type things about farmers and about businesses that we help, stuff like that. And we generally try to have the fun side of it. When we're doing blog posts, they're more serious. You know, WP Engine just asked us to write a blog post about how we're helping small businesses on the Western Slope. That just went live. Things like that. Um, is it going to be for all audiences? No. Is it getting our brand out there? Yes. Some of it is keyword specific. Some of it is not keyword specific. Some of it is plain and simple, passion driven fun. Great, Brian, we've got another question for you. Mara would like to know, is there a case study of a company that you can talk about, a real world example to show some of this in practice? Um, let's see. So, So there's a, okay, there's a company in Grand Junction, the guy who invented reusable canning lids um, set his father up in business. And it's a long story, but they had a falling out. And in the falling out, his father took on a partner and the partner was not treating him right. So the son decided I'm gonna do it again. And he started here and he's producing them. I think he's producing the lids actually in uh, Montrose and it's called Harvest Guard and it's canninglids.com. So he in invented the space and through content marketing, whether it was on cooking blogs or canning blogs and emails and driving traffic through Facebook and SEO, um, we're using all this content marketing and nurturing, nurturing people because we know that they're not always ready to buy now. It's not canning season. Well, now that it's people are thinking canning season 
and especially because of COVID and more people are farming and gardening, his sales are going through the roof. So I think, you know, this stuff, a lot of times it doesn't happen overnight, but it builds your brand, it builds awareness of your brand and it positions you as what we like to call domain authority. You are an expert in your space of blue cars, canning lids, whatever that is. And, you know, that allows somebody to, I'm gonna pay attention, I'm gonna pay attention, I'm gonna read these emails. Because it, it's hard to get people's attention these days. It's too much in our inboxes. So, you know, it's, it's the, the better content you give them, the more informative, the better you help their lives, the better it's gonna be. <laughs> the beta. Okay, beta. So beta is working with us with Quicker Stuff. So I have a company, Quicker Stuff, um, that we just launched that makes bike racks right here in Grand Junction. And Veda is our rock star, the Elevator, by the way. And she ran the comedy track, by the way. Um, she's our intern and she's dealing with customer service. And what we're doing right now is we are kickstarting our sales by taking pre-orders and deposits, just like Kickstarter. But we are lucky enough that the designer of this rack has a history of over 20 years with this design. And he created a new design, which we actually licensed um, from him. So we're taking pre-orders and deposits so that we can kickstart our capitalists, uh, um, capitalists of, of building the factory, okay? Um, and we have this factory, my partner, JT, but we realize the demand and the demand right now is 6,300 people and counting on this wait list, and we're converting at a higher ratio than we thought, is that we need to build up this factory faster. So the way we're doing it is the email list that we've built up over time, and we've built demand and we've built um, you know, excitement, for better or for worse, I might add, because there's negativity, because Cal kept promising people since 2017, and he made bad promises to people. He's human, you know, he had, he had a tough time. Luckily, finally, we got it going, we're producing racks. Um, we're, we're marketing only to the wait list. We're giving them pre-sale pricing. They can put down a $199 deposit or they can pay full price. If you pay full price, you go to the top of the list to get your rack. And after all the full price people are done, the deposit people can then start um, putting in the rest of their payment for the rack and they'll get theirs. So we're doing a Kickstarter without using the Kickstarter platform. Is that good enough, Veda? <laughs> it's very, it's very good enough, okay. It is funny sitting on a Zoom call because my life has been Zoom calls for years we've been using it and having only the two of us talking and seeing all your faces. Does anybody just want to have discussions and talk about problems and that we can solve? Because I like being in that mode better. You know, presentations are great, but let's talk about problems. Who wants to talk about things that you're working on? And let's just, let's see if we can work out while we're here. I'll go. Okay, you can go first. <laughs> um, so I am a VA. And um, so what I tend to tackle for people is the email marketing side of things. Um, this past week, I tackled a project for a lady who was starting up, um, trying to grow her email marketing. Um, so trying to accomplish exactly what you're talking about with having, um, you know, the two second catch in the in the subject line and talking about what her audience matter you know like what matters to them um i guess is there is there something more i could be doing other than um you know uh sorry i'm trying to go over everything in my mind um last week we t i went to one of these and it was talking about you know putting in an offer, right? Like subscribe a friend and um, that'll help you build up your email marketing kind of a thing. 
are there other ways of going about that um, so that I can make sure I'm targeting the correct people that she needs to target? Does that make sense? Yeah, so let me go back. What, what is she selling again? I'm sorry. So her business specifically is a subscription box. Okay, like a CSA or? Um, for her, it was it's a gift bag. Okay. And so right. every month people get, you know, these pre-made gifts with the packaging and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I mean, I think email marketing and building that list are huge. Loyalty programs are monstrous. Years ago, before um, the airlines got healthy again, of course, before COVID too, but years ago, the airlines were struggling. American Express made more money off its loyalty program and awards programs than it did off of flights. And because they were selling to their database, they were selling products, right? You could buy trips, you could buy luggage, you could buy computers from them. They were making more money off of that. So loyalty programs are huge. Refer a friend programs, another great thing. Um, if she, do you know what platform her website is on? Uh, currently it's through Crate Joy, which is specific for uh, subscriptions, but she's looking at, to move it to something else that's a little more user friendly for customization. Okay. Um, we, our company is very bullish on WordPress because you can get to use another car analogy, the Chevy and the Cadillac all at one time. You can start with the Chevy and customize it to get the Cadillac. Um, yeah, there, there's plugins that you can use for WordPress to create these referral systems and loyalty systems. They range from anywhere from free to $200 a year. And that way you don't have to have somebody write custom code. So Years ago, we hated WordPress. In the last five years, WordPress has become amazing. Um, and the, you know, when you look at the, all the websites in the world, you have WordPress here and all the other ones are like here. They all add up to be like this. Um, that's not to say that other website platforms can't help you. We just, our, because we're, ner you know, data nerds and nerds, we don't want to tear down a house to build another house. We want to constantly remodel the house. So we would rather you start with WordPress and we keep fixing and adding on and adding on than you throwing out a whole $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 website. We, we hate that. We, we're, my psychology is I want to drive traffic. So going back to your, you know, your question, I, I, I think loyalty and referral programs are huge. Um, I would look into that. And social media, um, you know, drives traffic to your site. That's obviously Facebook is Facebook for a reason. Instagram shopping is something worth looking into. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I encouraged her to, um, as I said, because this is like just beginning baby startup, um, was to reach out to those friends and family that, you know, don't mind the spamming kind of a thing and say, hey, can you please refer me or, Hey, I know you believe in me and what I'm doing, you know, can you pass the, you know, can you post this to your Facebook page and, and that kind of a thing. So trying to get that organic as well as, you know, then coming alongside with the holistic of getting in that email marketing, like you're saying to be customized to the greatest potential for her. Yeah, and it's, and it's a process. And, and I, I think one of the things you have to say to yourself is, you know, fail forward. Try things, experiment, make sure you're measuring results. You have all your tracking and your analytics in place and you just keep trying things. Um, I, I didn't even think about it, but of course, Pinterest would be um, potentially a good one for this too. Um, I don't know if that's answering your question enough, but you know, when I get in consulting mode, I am constantly telling people, let's get to executions as fast as possible. Let's get to the strategy. Let's create a keep it simple, stupid strategy and let's start testing. Because the, the executions and the data that comes back from the executions will inform us on how to iterate on the strategy. So yeah, getting, absolutely. Getting that data back is huge. Um, 
I see two questions in here. Do you mind if I answer those? Um, so Jen here it says wordpress.org or .com. Um, the .org is for the free part of you getting plugins and their shopping. The .com is where you can get a, a website hosted. We are not bullish on wordpress.com hosting. It's not the end of the world. It's not the worst. Ironically, the people who invented WordPress have invested in a company called WP Engine, and we use them. Um, they have a, what's called a cPanel that's very specific to optimizing WordPress sites. And we have a bunch of e-commerce customers with lots of traffic. So we like them. Um, it's about the same price, um, $29 roughly for hosting. I don't recommend if, if you have a lot of traffic coming to your site, GoDaddy, I'm a GoDaddy wholesaler. Regretfully, I tell people the only thing to buy on GoDaddy um, is hosting, um, excuse me, is domains, not hosting. <laughs> um, e email for GoDaddy and hosting are, are just uh, not that good. Um, so I, I recommend uh, you check out WP Engine. Um, that, that's where all of our servers and all of our client servers are. It's not to say we don't work on other servers, but we've just found it through the years um, that it's, it just performs better. Um, I see another question here. Um, Co-founder of a new Colorado-based software startup, trying to raise awareness with living financial resources, a uh, bang for the buck. Um, it's overwhelming to research and evaluate all the possible marketing solutions. Um, I would say, Focus on as little as possible when it comes to tactics. Um, yes, it is overwhelming. And if you start with the big boys, you're gonna do better than the niche. The ultimate of all these tactics is to build your list, period. Um, email might be old school. My kids wanna text me. Um, they wanna Facebook messenger me, whatever. In business, email works. And it's still the universal. Is it changing? Sure, it's changing. But it's not changing that much. So it still is the number one ROI tactic. So anything you can do to drive traffic to a landing, for a landing page to convert them via a form and go into your email list, you know, that's what you want to do. So content is the key to driving it. Do you want to write blogs and automatically post them to Facebook? By the way, I didn't talk about that. Every time you write a blog, you want to make sure that blog is being posted to Facebook, LinkedIn, Dig, Delicious, Reddit, et cetera. I didn't talk about that, that part of the tree. Um, and then when somebody sees that on Reddit, not only are they coming back to your site, but because those are big domain authority sites, you'll get good SEO for those for those links back, they're called backlinks. Um, yes, I mean, the bang for your buck, there's no question it is, um, it's email. As far as trying to raise that awareness, if you find an audience that you're solving a problem for, you might create a Facebook or LinkedIn group and start using them as your people, your tribe to say, I'm, so, I'm trying to solve this problem for like-minded people or businesses. Is this something you even want solved? Or better yet, I know there's a problem to be solved. How can I better solve it? And then you solve a problem for a business, they'll split the difference with you on the cost savings any day of the week. So I think that's a way, uh, Joe, to go out there and, and try it you know, figure out how do you raise awareness and, and get feedback. My pleasure. Um, we got five minutes left here. Everybody um, feel free to email me um, if you have problems. Generally like a lawyer, we have the first hour for free because we can't solve all your problems. 
and sometimes we just have to refer you to somebody else who's better or has uh, different skill sets than us. Um, oops, hold on, I have to be better at my chat skills. I just put my email in there. I mean, Kayleen, I know you, I mean, what can you bring to the table here? I mean, you have a different perspective. You live the same crazy life that I live. So I'm a huge content marketing enthusiast as well. Uh, I graduated from college with a journalism degree and kind of fell flat on my face looking for journalism opportunities when somebody suggested to me, well, if you like writing, why don't you start running blog campaigns for people and learn about SEO rich copywriting strategies. And so that has been a huge part of my bread and butter for the last seven and a half years. And I think that it is just, it is, yeah, like you said, it's the trunk of the tree. It is the piece of the strategy that you absolutely can't ignore. And I am all about bootstrapping, especially when it comes to small businesses. I'm a bootstrapped small business owner myself. And so this is just such a great way that you can invest sweat equity into increasing your traffic via search, via social, having fodder for your newsletter campaign. It just seems like an obvious why not. I think the biggest struggle for people is getting content ideas ideas organized ahead of time and holding themselves accountable to producing that content. Um, I always recommend that people don't over allocate themselves. It, it probably is not reasonable to expect that if you're publishing zero blogs right now, that you're going to be publishing four blogs a month come four weeks from now. So I always want to see people set realistic goals, even if that's just one blog and one newsletter a month to start with, then increase it to two, then increase it to four once you really have the bandwidth and the capacity for that. Um, and I like to plan out at least 12 topics in advance based on what my keyword goals are so that I I kind of have those ideas turning around in my head. I've got a calendar. That way it doesn't just, I'm not just sitting here going, oh no, it's a month. I need to publish a blog and I don't have any uh, structure for that. So it's a lot easier if I just say, oh, hey, it's the second Tuesday of the month. I write my blog on the second Tuesday of the month. What is my topic for this month? Oh, here it is. Fantastic. And so um, you're doing yourself a huge favor if you can batch work those ideas in advance so that you can be cranking that stuff out. Um, I'm a huge fan of setting Google Calendar notifications for the things that I have to do. So I might set, if I was going to try to do one blog a month or two blogs a month, I'd have a repeating Google Calendar notification that went off every one, two, or four weeks, holding me accountable to that goal of creating that content and, uh, and getting that live. Um, and there are also some awesome resources out there. I have seen that content creators planner. I absolutely love that. I highly recommend copyblogger.com. That is one of the first resources that I found when I got into this field for inspiration. They're going to give you a lot of great ideas there. Um, and then if this isn't something that you can handle yourself, outsource it. <laughs> find, find an intern yeah. or outsource it to a company that can make sure that this is happening for your business. I would say also that Royce just put something in the track in, in the chat too for everybody. Um, and yeah, I would say, you know, find a virtual assistant, like, you know, like as my sales butler, we're part of a, a US writers pool. And every once in a while, a customer comes to us and they have a, a vertical that we're, we can't find a writer for. It happens, but we are very specific that we only want US writers for our blogs because you know you're extending the brand and you want somebody with a voice who can speak to that um, another trick to add to your tricks is you can take google docs inside the chrome browser and turn on speech recognition and you can literally dictate that way i mean macs have built-in dictation google docs have built-in dictation the google docs one works really well. I think it works way better than the Mac. Um, and you can knock it out that way. I have a super quick question, I think. <laughs> so I use a lot of different pieces uh, for this content strategy, like some of the tools you su suggested, like Insightly, MailChimp, things like that. But I feel like my missing link is the automation that connects it all. I've got automation, that they offer in their individual programs, but 
can you point me in the right direction of specific tools that you'd recommend to like I'm just not sure where the missing link is but I know it's there because I have more work than I know I need to have well what is your website platform we use WordPress okay so WordPress um, I, I definitely highly recommend gravity forms um, to collect the data and push it everywhere um, Zapier is a tool that takes if then statements kind of like if this new email comes in from gravity forms send it to this segment in MailChimp and this segment in MailChimp the first email it gets is welcome to my website um, um, MailChimp has that automation built in too um, I'm trying to think are you using a um, CRM like Salesforce or high rise or any of those I use insightly. Okay. Using insightly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I remember insightly, but I'm not real familiar with it. I know it's really Google friendly or I assume you're using G suite. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't remember. Does, does insightly do um, marketing automation? It's like a, a pretty expensive addition. So no, right at this point, we haven't taken that plunge. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to guess that you can, with Gravity Forms, push the, the customer data to Insightly and then push the, um, the first automation trigger to MailChimp to start a routine. Okay. Zapier, um, P-A-P-E-R, I just put it in the chat. Perfect. And a lot of Thank times, you. you don't even need... If you're using like salesforce.com, you know, it's going to cost you $15 a month, but a lot of the zaps are free. Um, so before you sign up to pay, just check it out first. Okay, great. Thank you for the. Yeah, you're welcome. And then, you know, and email me if you need more help. Or email that girl from Mountain Dog Media. I know her. She's really good. Hey, thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So that gets us to one o'clock. Are there any final questions or comments? We do still have the Zoom available to us for a few more minutes if there's anything else anybody wants to add. Otherwise, the video uh, recordings of all of these presentations are going to be available in the next couple of days. So I'll check back for those on Monday. You'll be able to rewatch this and slow down and pause, zoom in on anything that um, you need to revisit. So it looks like we got some thank yous. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Let's all connect on LinkedIn after this. Um.